Welcome to Diligent Canine, and in this video I'm going to teach the place and touch command for your dog. So I've got a hungry dog that hasn't eaten and it's in the early afternoon. I've got a bait bag with uh, some kibble in it. Um, and I don't have a clicker because my dog is currently on a verbal marker. So for reference in the video, anytime that I say yes with a sharp inflection like yes, you see, got my dog's attention. Um, when I say that, that is my version of a click. I have used mechanical clickers in the past. I think they're great. I'm just not at that stage right now for my dog. So stay tuned and let's learn how to teach your dog to touch something and how to go to a place. The place command is essential for behavior management, even for pet dogs. So it's the foundation for a lot of things, including the touch command, um, a send out, uh, climbing up on something, jumping over something. Basically, it's telling your dog to go to that place. Of course, you can use whatever word you want, but in my mind, it helps me remember, especially when I was developing these foundational skills, in my dog that place meant go to that place. So um, what we need for that is our dog and some sort of place marker that we're gonna lure the dog onto. So hopefully you have some sort of bed or crate mat, uh, something like that where you can designate the spot you want your dog to go. I will mention that this is just a training tool to begin with, so um, you know, in the future, when a guest comes over to your house, your dog is maybe getting a little too excited and you need to tell them to go to their place and, and chill out for a minute. So that may mean that you want them to go to your bed in your living room, or if you have a similar interaction out in public, not necessarily a negative altercation, just you don't want your dog going somewhere or you see some kind of trouble brewing or just a situation you want to avoid, you might tell your dog to go Tell your dog to go to this place over here. Come sit over here or down over here, uh, whichever behavior you'd like to bridge on top of it. So before we get, so before we get into any cueing uh, or verbal commands or hand gestures, I do use both by the way, um, we just want the dog to get familiar with what we want them to do. So again, that physical marker, that tactile stimulation makes it really clear for the dog that when I get on this thing, I get rewarded. And my criteria, uh, this is my criteria, but you can of course decide for yourself and you need to do that before you start training your dog. But my criteria for a place is that I want all four paws on the thing. So whether that is a bed, um, a, a crate mat or whatever whatever tool you're using uh, when I say place I want all four paws to be on it so this will be different from a touch command where I only require the front two paws to be on something so let's take a look at that lure in here yes and it's helpful if I can lure the dog off it when I reward him so I'm going to lure on Yes. And reward as soon as all four paws get on the crate mat. And while I'm delivering the reward, I'm leading the dog off of the mat. So that means I can get repet I don't have to waste time uh, resetting in between. I can just sort of go boom, 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 like so. Yes. So once your dog starts to get the hang of that, uh, the luring, again, you might need to go at your own pace. You'll know when your dog is ready. And if they're not, it's okay, totally okay. In fact, it's a great idea to back up uh, a step or two and make sure they've really got the fundamentals down. So once your dog gets the luring handled and that's going very well, you can start to add the um, command on top of it. So like I said, I use place because in my mind that means go to that place. So again, I'm going to give the command and then lure and the reward process is going to be the same. 
teach a place command and again that's the foundation for a lot of things it's the foundation for a send out it's the foundation for a stay command um, and it's it's just good behavior management so these sort of targeting exercises help control your dog and they're the foundation for any kind of movement based behavior that you're trying to teach the dog so with the place command covered let's get into touch then as I said earlier, my criteria for a place command is all four paws on the target surface. For a touch command, my criteria is just the front two paws. So the distinction here is um, the four paws for a place command would be all on the same plane. So like a mat on the ground. I want the dog to go to and get out of the way. A touch command might be something that I want the dog to stand up and put his front two paws on. So. Um, for this, I just use um, a regular dining table placemat. Um, it serves the same purpose as leather targets of similar shape and size. Those might be a little smaller. They are commercially made. I think they're about the size of a dinner plate. Um, but it's the same concept to having a tactile target for the dog. Um, it is also helpful, um, I did find when teaching this initially to my dog, Dean, that having a raised surface as well is really helpful for the dogs um, to learn and, and know specifically what they're supposed to do. It seems like um, to me that they get a little confused, especially if they've already learned or are learning a place command at the same time, that they're not sure if, if you're just pointing to a target, if they're supposed to go to this general area or what exactly they're supposed to do with their feet. Um, but again, 
sorry, to remedy that, um, you can use like an overturned two gallon bucket. You don't necessarily want something too tall, um, but a low sitting chair or a small bucket overturned makes a really clear picture for the dog then. Um, a lot of people use the rubber, the big rubber water bowls and overturn them as well. So again, this is a foundational exercise for, um, it'll be what is used to build turns, those really tight, close turns when your dog is healing at your side. Um, and it's good practice. It's good practice for agility and uh, sort of keeping the dog attuned and uh, growing in their agility and their, well, their physical and mental agility. Getting into it then, I'm gonna follow a similar process as with the place command. I'm gonna start by luring my dog towards the target and initially, um, well, my goal is to have them put two feet on it, their front two paws, but I'll settle for having interest in the target. So if your dog hasn't done this before, um, even coming near the target might warrant a reward. Then putting one paw on the target um, might be helpful as well. Uh, similar to like a shake command, it's okay in the initial stages early on to kind of help your dog. If you see them really struggling and getting stuck, um, to sort of like lift one of their paws onto the target. Now, you don't wanna obviously always do this for them because then the dog is learning that you will do the job and you don't want that. But you also want to do what is your job and that's to teach the dog what you're expecting and what the criteria is. So let's go with luring here and we'll go ahead and see how that goes. Yes. So now we're waiting for the second paw and reward off of the target. Yes. And I waited for the second paw to touch down. Um, he had one on and I waited for the second. Yes. When that is going well, just like before, I can issue my command, and he already knows. My command, my hand gesture um, for a touch command is just pointing with my finger. Okay, so versus pointing with all my fingers and my thumb for a place command, I'm pointing with just one finger for a touch. So I'm going to go away, and I use my verbal command, touch, lure, yes, mark and reward. Touch. Yes. And then with the hand gesture, touch. Yes. And touch. Yes. Place. Yes. Place. Good. Place. Good. Place. Touch. Yes. Touch. Yes. Touch. No. Touch. Up here. Touch. Yes. Ding. Touch. Touch. Not quite there yet. 